Hello everyone, we're back. Let's hope you all got coffee, something stronger if you need it. But we're back with a very, a very interesting presentation coming all the way from America. So if you think you got up early today, then this guy certainly did. So we're going to be joined by independent industry technology analyst Chris Dupuy of the 650 Group. Chris, is a, and here he is now. I'm just singing your praises, Chris. <laughs> Thank you for that. And I've, I've mentioned how heroically early you must have got up to do this presentation. I think you're in Nevada, over on the west side of the states. That's right. I'm right, uh, right at the California border. Right. Okay. And and are you near any of those terrible fires we've been hearing about? Yeah. Well, I, I am uh, near the fires, but I have to say they're uh, they're easing up now that you know the season is is progressing, and it's quite uh, it was quite a nice day actually today. Oh, thank goodness. So if the screen goes a bit hazy, it's just the smoke, is it? That's right, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, look, you're going to talk to us about some of the exciting future opportunities. And I've got a note here, especially around education, healthcare, hospitality. So uh, the stage is yours. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's um, It would be nice to meet you in person. I'm, I'm sorry we're not doing that, but uh, I do have some... Uh, interesting um, information here I'd like to share with you about the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet switching market. So as Brian mentioned, I'm a market research analyst and uh, I create uh, market share uh, uh, tables as well as forecasts. And what I would like to share with you uh, are some trends that I think may be, may be useful and interesting. So uh, for the agenda here, uh, the agenda is we um, have had uh, an impact from the pandemic, as everyone is aware, uh, that is, it, is, um, it has changed the way the wireless land and switching market have progressed. But I have to say that there's quite a bit of opportunity that has emerged in the wake of the pandemic. Um, just some examples are contact tracing and crowd management. Uh, and um, I'll be touching on that as well as some wireless and switching market trends, uh, some key verticals, as Brian had mentioned earlier, and uh, also cloud managed, uh, the managed services trends, and also I will discuss uh, spectrum as it relates to Wi-Fi and other wireless markets. And the point of the presentation today is that we see opportunity in all of these trends. And so, uh, let's just focus a bit on uh, 2020. Um, uh, it's very clear that the revenue levels in the wireless land market and the switching market were negatively impacted. I'm sure that each of you has seen uh, these types of trends, um, although uh, what we are seeing as we look forward into 2021 is we're expecting the trends to return to, to growth. Um, and this is very important. Um, I think that uh, we've, you know, we've seen we've seen the worst of it, and and we're expecting that the wireless land market and the switching market will uh, return to growth in 2021 and beyond. And I'll, I'll share some uh, data with you that um, is uh, related to these things. And also, what's happening is we've seen the creation of new opportunities, such as work from home, learn from home, as I mentioned earlier, contact tracing. Um, new uh, needs for surveillance to uh, you know, make sure we know where people are to keep them healthy. Um, and um, generally speaking, as we uh, move away from bricks and mortar a little bit and towards a digital uh, economy, we of course are having digitalization, which is impacting wireless LAN and switching as well. So these are some opportunities that have uh, resulted here as a result of the pandemic. Now, uh, I do want to share just a couple, uh, I don't know, screenshots of what we are collecting as we are going through our research. And um, what, what's happening is companies, you know, have sent, sent their workers home uh, in the case of carpeted enterprises or in the case of, you know, the hospitality industry, uh, the, the traffic has been down quite significantly and same thing with air travel. But what is happening is companies uh, like uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, an investment bank uh, in the U.S., as well as Google, um, these uh, the leaders of these companies are saying we need to get our employees back to work, and that's kind of recent. It's happened in the past couple of weeks that these 
uh, leaders are saying, it's time. We need to get these workers back. And what that is doing is creating opportunity for technology companies to serve the needs of these, these companies, the banks and other tech companies so that, um, so that workers can return back. So this creates an opportunity. And uh, I'm quite, um, quite positive on what's, um, what's to come here. Okay, let's talk specifically about the, the work from home opportunity. So what's happening here is we're seeing in some cases as uh, employees are sent, have been sent back to home, uh, enterprise class wireless gear has been purchased by the company and then uh, delivered to the home. This uh, represents a, a minority of the behavior that we've seen in the um, treatment of work from home, but, but it does provide some opportunity for, uh, for companies um, who are selling this gear. But what is, um, what's becoming also uh, more common is that uh, home users are upgrading their Wi-Fi networks and um, their uh, employer is delivering a, uh, either software or a cloud service connection to the home. And what this allows the enterprise to do is make sure that its users are uh, connected to the, you know, the corporate network or the cloud services that they normally will connect to. So work from home is, is changing the way that we're um, building these networks and, and uh, as well as the security layers on top of them. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, contact tracing is something that we've uh, seen as a new opportunity that has emerged in the marketplace. And what uh, what happened is uh, in May we wrote a we wrote a paper. You can go to our website and download this if you're interested. But the point of it is, is that these are uh, this is one example of uh, a cloud services uh, system that's been developed over. Uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, there are many ways to do this, but this is what is um, uh, the focus of this paper. And uh, the point of it is that as companies uh, return their workers uh, back to the office, it's uh, important to recognize that they can use these types of systems over the Wi-Fi uh, and Bluetooth networks. And that um, makes the Wi-Fi networks quite important for the uh, employers. And it's a, it's a great new opportunity that's emerged. Okay, as I uh, mentioned to you earlier, uh, I'm going to share some of our forecasts for the marketplace. And what you'll see is two graphs here. On the left is the enterprise uh, Wi-Fi market forecast. Uh, this is the worldwide forecast. And you can see that uh, we expect that starting um, 2021, we're going to see growth for the next uh, several years. And um, just to put in the context what is happening uh, I've also shared, I'm also sharing with you the consumer wireless LAN uh, infrastructure revenues. These are gateways, routers, that kind of thing. And you can see that this is also expected to be a growth market. Okay, so that's from 2020 to 2024. You might be curious, uh, what, it, what happened in 2020? Here are the numbers. On the left, you can see the enterprise market in 2020 did in fact decline, uh, declined um, measurably. But uh, as I told you in the earlier chart, we see growth ahead and uh, we got there the hard way, it's true. But um, from here on, I think we're uh, gonna be, we're gonna be um, experiencing growth. And, and I just uh, shared something here that I thought you might find interesting that the consumer Wi-Fi market actually uh, accelerated. And you know, uh, this is a bit of a reversal um, of prior trends in that enterprise previously was growing faster than consumer and now Consumer is growing a little bit faster because of you know, people are returning to home uh, to, to get their work done. Okay, um, this chart shows our forecast for unit shipments of enterprise class access points. And what's important here is that there are three new upgrade cycles coming in Wi-Fi. Uh, there is the one that um, you're probably uh, all aware of and are working on, Wi-Fi 6. But we, we expect starting next year, we'll see Wi-Fi 6E um, come to the uh, European nations and then Wi-Fi 7 a couple years down the line. So think about that. There's three separate upgrade cycles coming. This is really quite exciting and provides a lot of opportunity. Um, there are many features that come with the new uh, types of Wi-Fi. And um, uh, most 
important here is um, that they deliver higher speeds. What I want to talk to you about is what happens when these higher wireless speeds um, get delivered to users is it also drives a need to upgrade the switching infrastructure that's connected to it. And that's the subject of the next chart. So what's happening is we're expecting a switching evolution as Wi-Fi 6 and then Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 and IoT uh, start to, to emerge into the um, enterprise market, we're expecting that this will drive more bandwidth, uh, which uh, will drive a, a need to upgrade switching, uh, switches that connect to Wi-Fi. And also, um, because we're going to have uh, higher speed systems that uh, leverage or that use more radios, especially when Wi-Fi 6E comes out, will actually be driving to higher levels of power which uh, may in fact exceed um, regular uh, power of ethernet levels. So this is some, something that's, that's important to, to, to work out. And I would like to now show you what we're expecting for um, the enterprise or campus ethernet switching market uh, forecasts. So here's our, uh, our enterprise or campus switching forecast. And you can see we're expecting uh, modest growth from the year 2020 to 2024. You might be wondering why the growth is only modest, and that is because you know Wi-Fi is taking a greater role in connecting uh, devices than than switching. Switching is moving somewhat more to a supportive role uh, uh, behind Wi-Fi, and that is precisely why we're expecting a campus switch upgrade cycle. So, if you look at the trends here, you can see that we're uh, forecasting that multi gigabit, in other words, two and a half or five gigabits per second, will be growing uh, measurably in the next several years. And that is because these will support Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7. This is a tremendous opportunity if you're in the switching uh, business and we're, um, we're quite bullish on, on how, this, um, how this will play out. Um, furthermore, I also wanna share with you that um, because these switches are playing increasingly a supportive role, we're expecting that power over ethernet will um, grow uh, quite significantly over the next several years. And you can see that uh, we expect that power over ethernet port shipments will be 15% greater uh, in 2024 if you compare that to 2020. So. This is um, you know, another opportunity because many of the switches in the install base are not capable of connecting to these new Wi-Fi systems that are either Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E or, or in the future 7, Wi-Fi 7. And um, there's two reasons upgrade is for bandwidth and for power. So these are the forecasts I wanted to share with you about switching. Let's focus back then on the wireless land market. This is our, uh, our forecast for the, um, the period uh, where we're comparing 2024 revenues in each of the main geographies to our 2020 revenues. And you can see that we're expecting the market's gonna grow 8% over that period of time. Um, but it, it's our forecast that the European regions will experience slightly higher growth than the rest of the world. Um, the, the general uh, trends here are, uh, is that um, the you know, Chinese uh, the com country will experience higher growth, but uh, we, we are quite, um, uh, we're expecting that the European areas will you know, grow, grow a bit quicker um, because the penetration rate of this technology, wireless LAN has not uh, quite tapped out to the extent that the North American forecast has. Okay, um, Brian mentioned I'll be talking about some verticals. So uh, we are uh, highlighting three of the key verticals in the wireless land market here um, in the European uh, region. And uh, here are our forecasts. If you compare 2024 um, unit shipments to the 2020 unit shipments across three of the key verticals that we cover. Uh, we do cover others, but these are some of the ones that I felt were important. Um, so 
what we're expecting is that the education market, this includes universities as well as uh, schools um, for children before they go to university, um, we are expecting this market to be stable. It's a mature market. Uh, this is one of the very earliest markets that has adopted wireless LAN. And um, we do see some new uh, demands on this market, uh, such as health monitoring, as I was referring to earlier. But the key here is this is a stable market. It's kind of, um, it's kind of table stakes. We, we have had uh, you know, this market go from not using Wi-Fi many years ago to using uh, uh, Wi-Fi very commonly. That's why we expect it to be stable. Healthcare, on the other hand, um, we expect this to be a very uh, thriving market. Uh, we're planning for there to be more automation, data collection, communications needs, as well as obviously health monitoring, as I was referring to earlier. So this is a, a very exciting market. And, um, and then for the third, third vertical market, we are uh, expecting that the hospitality market will be about 9% greater in four years relative to this year. Now, um, it's, uh, it's very true that the tourism market has, uh, has uh, slowed down, but we're expecting that local tourism um, will, will drive, uh, drive the market over the next couple of years and then, then become uh, more broad with, you know, let's say, international travel. But what's happening is there is um, uh, the need for health monitoring, surveillance, the use of Internet of Things, and actually more digitalization. To, uh, to allow uh, there to be a safer environment for, uh, for visitors. And so we're expecting that this market will actually be bigger in a, uh, about four years than it is, um, than it is this year. And um, we see an opportunity here, uh, especially as the needs in the hospitality market change. Okay, uh, let's shift now to the wireless uh, market uh, technology. So we are quite bullish on the cloud managed uh, trends, uh, especially when you compare them to our expectations for the hardware or the, or the software based controller for Wi-Fi market. Now, why is it that we're expecting the cloud managed services trend to be positive and, and grow faster than controller? Cloud managed, you know, this technology has been around for a while, but it is still expanding in its use and is in some ways re replacing the controller in certain, uh, certain verticals and in certain uh, customer uh, sizes. Um, so that is be the, one of the compelling reasons to use cloud managed is because it is simpler to use. Um, and the other thing that cloud managed is able to do is manage disparate systems. What I mean by that is if you have multiple branch offices or multiple hotels or multiple school uh, campuses, using cloud managed is uh, quite a bit more effective than using a controller because it allows you to work uh, across the internet instead of inside one building, putting one controller and then another controller and then trying to tie them together. So uh, cloud managed works very well for medium sized businesses with lots of branches or large, large companies with branches as well. And um, we expect this trend will, uh, will continue quite, for quite some time, uh, especially, um, uh, especially in light of the, uh, the trends that we've seen, uh, as I was sharing earlier. Now, uh, speaking of trends, I'd like to show you our forecast for the cloud managed services market. That is the red line. We expect it to grow 13% a year for the next handful of years. And uh, that is quite a bit faster than our forecast for the controller, which we expect to decline 8% each year for the next four, uh, for the next, sorry, five years. Now, um, I told you why we expect cloud managed services to grow uh, faster. Um, but there's also something else that's, that's happening here. The Wi-Fi equipment market, as I showed you earlier, uh, we're expecting to grow 3%. Uh, a year for the next four years, but now we're expecting cloud managed services to grow faster. And that is, that is sort of like the, the trend that we're seeing is that there are more value added capabilities that are being added on top of the Wi-Fi infrastructure. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, cloud, cloud managed um, services allow you to you know, manage uh, disparate systems or switching plus wireless. Uh, similarly, we see security systems being offered on top of Wi-Fi systems. That is what we are 
referring to here when we talk about enhanced network access control or ENAC. This basically is a way to make sure that the users that get onto the network are supposed to be there. It uh, manages guest access. This manages whether the uh, software systems uh, of the, on the devices that connect are up to date. And um, then if you look at the yellow dotted line, uh, we're expecting analytics and services also to grow faster than the, the Wi-Fi market itself. As I told you, contact tracing is becoming popular. There's also you know, roaming services and location services, and shopping services, ad services. There's plenty of them to go around. And each of these three uh, lines are growing faster than the Wi-Fi market. So the key here is that we expect that the value-added services that ride on top of Wi-Fi will grow faster than Wi-Fi itself. And this is a great area to, to focus on because this, is, um, this provides uh, ample opportunity. Um, speaking of opportunity, I wanted to share with you another trend that has been underway for several years now, and that is the managed services trend. So what you can see here is we have uh, measured managed service provider as a percent of total wi enterprise class Wi-Fi revenues. And um, you can see that it's grown from about 5% to just over 10%. Uh, in the period 2014 to 2020. And what, what this means is that um, some uh, enterprise users want their channel partners or service provider partners to operate the Wi-Fi network either in whole or in part. And that trend is continuing to grow and, uh, or has grown in the past. And we expect this will, uh, will continue. I'm quite bullish on this, and um, what is uh, what is one typical bundle is you know a broadband service provider uh, will simultaneously offer a broadband service as well as offer a, a Wi-Fi service. That's one example of where it's like a traditional broadband service provider, and then and other examples are where a a um, uh, a reseller or a partner to companies that are purchasing technology. Uh, they may uh, want someone to run their network, maybe the switching and the wireless uh, uh, capabilities at the same time. So that's what's driving this, and we see we see it's quite um, quite a thriving market. Okay, um, I'm sort of reaching the end uh, of the presentation. I wanted to share something that uh, we're spending a lot of our time working on here. So. What's happening is there are uh, significant new uh, groups of spectrum that are being released. And this provides significant opportunity for not only the Wi-Fi market, but other markets. So you can see in our table, we're showing you know, several of the um, new opportunities that are emerging. And I just wanted to park it on the slide for a moment and share some something with you that I, I kind of just thought about recently. That is, if there was no 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz spectrum, there would be no Wi-Fi. Now think about that. The Wi-Fi market has been very successful. It carries by, uh, in most regions, 70 to 80% of all internet traffic, at least at the edge it does. Now, without this spectrum that was uh, released, the unlicensed spectrum was released, that traffic would not be carried anywhere. We'd be using wired connections like, you know, like Ethernet. I love Ethernet, but it's just not as convenient as Wi-Fi. So uh, if you buy my argument that there would be no Wi-Fi and that all this value was created because there's new unlicensed spectrum, there was an unlicensed spectrum granted roughly 20 years ago, then the uh, granting of additional uh, unlicensed spectrum, for instance, in six gigahertz, as well as 60 gigahertz, this creates more opportunity and more opportunity to generate revenues both at the equipment and software level, as well as at the services level. So um, this is quite, uh, uh, quite, um, quite a big deal, actually, if you look at six gigahertz. Um, there is a lot of new spectrum coming, and, and um, this creates a a, a very significant opportunity. So um, the other thing I wanted to uh, address on this slide uh, that, that you may find useful, um, and that is that I, I um, also cover some of the other uh, markets that Cambium 
uh, participates in. This is um, you know broadband access, broadband wireless access. And what I was doing was sort of putting together a matrix of who has products in each of these spectrums. And um, it's actually uh, it's actually the case that Cambium has uh, products across all these spectrums. And few, if any, vendors uh, have the same product breadth in terms of spectrum support. Um, and I think that's really interesting if you think about it, because what it, what it shows is that um, there's all this new unlicensed or in, in certain markets shared or private licensed um, spectrum that is available. And there are many ways to uh, take advantage of it. You can use many different protocols uh, as I've listed here on the chart. But the idea here is that this is a heck of an opportunity. And um, you know, as I said, very few companies are offering this type of um, support across these spectrums. And I, I must say, as I was doing the study, um, what I also saw was that several of the traditional wireless ISP uh, supply companies, uh, the Cambium competes with, competes with actually do not offer um, products in the 3.5 uh, or 60 gigahertz markets, um, for instance. Okay, so uh, I wanted to uh, then summarize here um, the presentation just to just to make sure um, I don't forget anything really is what this slide is. <laughs> okay, so there are uh, there are many opportunities in the wireless LAN uh, markets uh, as well as the switching market in, in the European uh, region. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we've you know obviously been through this pandemic. We're not quite through it, but uh, from this we're seeing new opportunities like contact tracing and crowd management which uh, ride on top of Wi-Fi. And um, from here on, uh, starting you know, the, from the low point 2020 into the next several years, we were seeing a recovery in both the, the Wi-Fi uh, and the switching markets. Um, we're, uh, we focused on these key verticals, education, hospitality, and healthcare. And as I told you, we expect healthcare to be almost 50% greater, uh, for instance, in, uh, in just four years and education and hospitality will uh, remain stable or slightly growing. Cloud managed services uh, are a tremendous way uh, to experience growth if you're focusing on these, but also it allows um, significant growth and differentiation opportunities with all the analytics, uh, analytics sorry, uh, that can be run on top of these systems. And uh, also um, we talked about the, uh, the managed services growth. Managed services, as I told you, um, is, uh, has been a growth market and I expect it to continue. What it does is allows there to be an ongoing relationship with, with customers because uh, basically this, the managed service provider is running the network and they're in the middle of things. And then I'd like to just close on the, uh, the point here that unlicensed shared and private spectrums is literally creating new networks out of thin air, which provide a lot of opportunity. And that is really, um, really uh, sort of where at ground zero again, uh, first new unlicensed and um, shared spectrum being offered in uh, about 20 years, a little over 20 years. So we're quite bullish on that opportunity. And with that, uh, I'd like to just spend briefly a, a moment to, just to share with you how you can learn more uh, about what we do in case you have questions. And basically, uh, the point of it is, is <laughs> we're on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Um, so thank you very much. We appreciate you taking the time. Chris, thank you very much for that. Nice to have such an upbeat presentation about the future. And obviously, nice that you said yourself that Cambium products seem to cover a lot of the range that you were talking about. Yeah, so, Cambium has been busy at work, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So thanks again for joining us. And, and go and have a well-deserved breakfast. I know it involves pancakes, but I think an extra stack's in store for you this morning. Thank you very much. I appreciate having me today. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye now. Bye.